Last year I talked about kindergarten and the different types of school. This year I'm talking about the training opportunities that are open to you after school. Probably the oldest form that around half of people in Germany do or did is an apprenticeship. Dual vocational training in Germany may be unique in an international comparison, also it is also widespread in Austria, Switzerland and other German-speaking regions such as South Tyrol or Belgium and has probably also been practiced in South Korea for a few years now. What is it? Where does it come from? What can I do with it and what's really cool about it? Let's take a look at that in this video. As always, I'm referring to Germany and trying to keep the statements as universal as possible. In contrast to school education, vocational training has been standardized at federal level since 1969. The training that an apprentice in the bakery trade or as a social insurance clerk receives in Bavaria is in principle identical to the training that they would receive in Hesse or Schleswig-Holstein. Historically, we can go back to antiquity and beyond because people always have taught other people how best to carry out a particular activity. Through the guiles in the Middle Ages, fixed rules were established and there was a division between apprentice, journeyman and master. These guiles gave rise to today's chamber of crafts and guiles, as we no longer only have craft business but also larger industrial companies, there are also chambers of industry and commerce. There is also a chamber of agriculture for example when it comes to agriculture, market gardening and the like. Roughly speaking there is a chamber for every profession from painter and vanisher to building cleaners and nursery gardeners to IT system specialist or legal and notary assistants where employers come together and determine what knowledge is required for this profession. The training content and, in some cases, the professions are constantly being adapted. The Kfz Schlosser or Kfz Mechaniker, car mechanic, has now become a Kfz Mechatroniker, car mechatronics technician, with more and more electrical and IT components. Whereas in the past the engine was checked in the valves clearance adjusted, today the fold is read out by the onboard computer. Other professions, such as scissor grinders, charcoal burners or silversmiths, have almost completely disappeared. On these channels, for example, links are in the description, you can find very nice examples of old crafts. At the same time, there are always new professions, for example, designer of immersive media. The BIBB, the Federal Institute for Vocational Education and Training, has been monitoring the training occupations since 1970 and summarizing the requirements. There are currently 335 different recognized training occupations. This does not yet include any nursing or educational professions such as midwife, educator, nurse, etc., but largely professions from industry, trade, crafts and agriculture. Nursing professions are regulated in the Nursing Profession Act. These were the 15 most popular apprenticeships in 2019, broken down into men and women. Even though there is basically no difference between the sexes and men, women and non-binary people can in principle pursue any profession, typically main domains such as skilled trades and professions involving a lot of technology are more popular with men, while women are more likely to take up social and care professions or administrative professions. Even at school there are work placements so that pupils can get a taste of professions in order to recognize for themselves what suits them. Depending on which apprenticeship is undertaken, these last two to three and a half years, usually three years, if the trainee already has the Abitur or Fachabitur, the duration of training is often shortened by up to one year. Training normally begins on the 1st of August or 1st of September each year, the training ends with the successful completion of the practical examination, which can also be in the middle of the week on the 20th of a month. The training is dual. It takes place in a training company, 
on the one hand and in a vocational school on the other. School attendance is compulsory in Germany until the age of 18. This means that if pupils leave school after the 10th grade with Hauptschulabschluss or Realschulabschluss, the children must continue to attend school or a recognized dual apprenticeship. In 2021, around 30% of trainees had an Abitur or Fachabitur, a good 40% a Realschulabschluss or Mittlere Reife and a quarter a Hauptschulabschluss. The young people apply for an apprenticeship at a company of their choice. If they are accepted, they sign the training contract and, if they are still minors, their parents do the same. They then work in the company and learn the job. They also attend vocational training. There is then a training plan for each trainee in accordance with the specifications of the relevant chamber to ensure that all training content is taught within the training period. This does not have to take place at the same time for every trainee. In the case of a commercial trainees, for example, it may be that with three trainees, one starts in the HR department, one in the accounting and one in sales, and they then change department every six months. While there is only a small proportion of public schools in primary and secondary schools, this number is definitely higher in vocational schools. Some schools were built by the employers themselves if there were no in the area or for the subject. Trainees often attend vocational schools two days a week in the first two years of training and only one day from the third year onwards. Sometimes, however, block teaching is also provided, especially if there are only a few schools for this since the trainees have long distances to travel to school. In such cases, three weeks or three months at the company may be followed by one week or one month at vocational training. In addition to general education lessons such as German, English, politics and sport, there are specialized lessons depending on the apprenticeship occupation. This could be merchandise science, botany, machine science, material science or similar. In math, training related calculations are carried out, such as calculation of angles and volumes in mechanical engineering or prices and profits in sales. At school, examinations are written and grades are awarded in the same way as at a normal school. The practical activities are then taught in the company. In addition, there are often intercompany training centers where various training contents are taught that are not available everywhere. If a company does not offer a typical activity that is necessary for the training at all, the company must join forces with another company and let the trainee train in the other company for a period of time. This may be the case, for example, if a company has outsourced its bookkeepings to a tax consultant, but this is important for training as an office administrator, or if a tree nursery does not carry out any grafting of plants itself. The trainees are paid for the entire period. There is a monthly trainee allowance regardless of how long the month is or how many days of vocational school were in the month. The average salary was recently 1057 euro per month as an average, as there is less money in the first year of the apprenticeship and more money in the third year. Here you can see some areas and the average apprenticeship pay. It is pleasing to say that the pay is highest in the nursing professions. Here you can see the pay in large companies is higher than in small companies. Of course in small companies you often have the opportunity to really have a look everywhere, but large companies sometimes have their own departments and workshops for additional training. Since 2023, the minimum remuneration for companies not bound by collective agreements have been at least 620 euro in the first year of apprenticeship. This dual training system is also one of the reasons why Germany has very low youth unemployment. In October 2023, the figure was just 5.6%, the lowest in the EU. Lehrjahre sind keine Herrenjahre. Apprenticeship years are not master years, as the saying goes. During training, you have to do a lot of what others say and little to say yourself, but this is 
also changing a little and the trainees are becoming more and more involved depending on the level of knowledge. However, once you have successfully completed your apprenticeship, you have the opportunity to work independently on train to become a master craftsman, specialist or technician, depending on the profession. In addition, if you want to do a vocational baccalaureate, Fachabitur, after your apprenticeships, the time at school is also one year shorter than if you do the Fachabitur at a specialized secondary school straight after school. And then there's a very old tradition in many trades, the vaults or traveling years. This tradition has even been an intangible world cultural heritage since March 2015. In the past, traveling years were sometimes compulsory and even today they are an opportunity for young people to get to know the world. Well known are the workers of the building huts in Middle Ages who were specialists and traveled all over Europe to erect large stone buildings such as cathedrals or castles. The carpenters are very well known here, but bakers, bricklayers, stonemasons and other journeymen also sometimes travel for three years and a day and are not allowed to return to their hometown during this time or in the Bannmeile, which is usually 50 kilometers around. You have to be under 30, single, debt-free and honorable. Depending on the shaft, as the association for such traveling journeymen call themselves, they are not even allowed to carry mobile phones. The umbrella organization of the shafts is the CCEG, Confédération Compagnonnage Européen, Europäische Gesellenzünfte, European Journeyman's Guilds, in Paris, which was founded in 1968. The traditional guilds are sometimes very strict and few allow women to go traveling. However, there are also free travelers who have not joined shaft. The luggage often consists of a bag for the clothes and a piece of luggage for the tools of the trade. In addition, a stick and a traditional outfit. Kluft. Here too, the outfit looks different depending on the trade, craft and shaft, and is usually tailor-made. Even the buttons on the jacket and waistcoat have their own meanings. Eight buttons for eight hours of work a day and six buttons for six working days a week. Even the cut of the trousers is traditional and probably comes from the carpenters. The flap at the bottom of the trousers served on the one hand to prevent chips from getting into the shoes. On the other hand, the trousers could be rolled up quickly, which was particularly useful for ship's carpenters, on the water. They could even be taken off very quickly if the ship carpenters fell into the water so they could swim well and save themselves. A golden earring is then often added. In the past it was used to ensure that the journeyman could be given a proper burial in a foreign country if the worst came to the worst. And if he broke the rules of the guild or the shaft, the earring was torn off and he became a schlitz or literally cut ear, a rascal. This made it clear to everyone that he was not an honorable craftsman. Hiking journeymen are typical in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France and Scandinavia, but such journeymen are not unknown in the rest of Europe either. In most cases, you will start traveling with an experienced guide who will show you the secrets. In various places there are some facilities in the shafts that make it possible to stay overnight at a favorable price, or various shops offer a free meal or similar discounts with a corresponding secret slogan. People only travel on foot, by public transport or by hitchhiking you do not have your own car. When traveling, you always visit companies or sometimes private households, ask if there is work and then stay for a day or a few months. For example, when traveling through small towns, you might find yourself repairing or cooking something in a private home, depending on the trade, in return for board and lodging or working for a while at a company. As the training is standardized, everyone knows that the journeyman know the basic and only need to be instructed in the specifics. At the same time, they learn how to organize certain things, so you always learn a lot. Would it be something for you? 
traveling around Europe or the world for three years and a day after your apprenticeship and working at a different company for a few days or weeks at a time? Maybe not even knowing in the morning where you'll be sleeping in the evening? It would certainly be an adventure. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.